welcome to the SVP annual meeting uh, brought to you virtually from Pale Fire Brewery. Uh, as you can tell from the setting and my clothing, nothing is normal anymore. And you will note my shirt here is both appropriate to the setting and what I've been driven to during this pandemic. Uh, I have earned this shirt. Uh, and because I don't have good memorization, I have got cue cards that I'm going to be using throughout this presentation. So uh, seriously, the Shenandoah Valley Partnership recognizes the pandemic and the times that we're living in. And we have been able to transition very quickly uh, to be responsive and to assist our businesses in the Valley, working with our communities. Therefore, we thought the setting here would be appropriate this morning for the times and what we want to present. Uh, we want to recognize many of the individuals and companies that personify the spirit of the Valley and how we are moving forward. Uh, we're also hosting it at a brewery because it also is part of the quality of life assets that make our region so attractive. And it's important to our talent retention and attraction efforts and our workforce efforts that you will hear a little bit more about later. Thank you to our sponsor, Appeal Production. Uh, Andy Van Hook and his team have been phenomenal in helping us transition to a virtual environment and providing us templates uh, to be very creative with our marketing. Uh, Appeal is running the production of the show this morning and trying their best to make me look good. If this comes off good, then you will know how good of a job they've done. And finally, if you have questions, we will try to get to all of them within the hour but use the question and answer feature, not the chat feature for all of you Zoom addicts out there. It is the question and answer uh, button, and we will get to those. So first, I'd like to introduce our host and our guest, which is, is Tim Brady. He is the founder and the general manager of Pale Fire Brewing, and during the pandemic, also of Pale Fire Helps. So Tim, welcome. We appreciate it. Thanks for hosting us. Yeah, absolutely. We're very excited to have uh, SVP here. We're excited to be here. Tell me, how did you get started? How did Pale Fire get started? And, and what was the process? All right. So the, uh, so the very long, no. Um, <laughs> I, I came down to uh, the Shenandoah Valley uh, to go to James Madison in 1998 and um, moved down from Northern Virginia thinking I was going to spend four years here. And I got a job brewing professionally in 2001. Um, which was, I was 21 years old, so that was fantastic. Um, and I stuck with it. Um, and around 2013, 2014, caught wind that the Ice House, which we're sitting in right now, at the time was just a dilapidated building, um, was gonna get refurnished. And I thought to myself, wow, that's incredible location, perfect place for a brewery. Um, you know, so, uh, you must have had a lot of foresight <laughs> to look at a dilapidated structure. And well, you know what I perfect. had was a lack of understanding of how much work it would take. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, but no, I mean, it, the, the Ice House is, is right downtown. Downtown Harrisonburg has kind of grown around it. Um, but it's also an old industrial space. So it has the, the um, infrastructure and kind of the bones that we need to be able to produce beer on a... Um, commercial level. So it, it really is the perfect place. Yeah. How long did it take you to go through that process? And you actually mentioned uh, someone I think was probably important in helping you, and that was the city of Harrisonburg. But how did that all come about? Well, so the idea um, really became a true idea that the night I went home and I said to my wife, hey, what if? And uh, instead of saying that I was crazy, she said, yeah, let's go for it, um, which is uh, amazing. Um, and then uh, it took about a year to two years to write the business plan, um, find funding, put everything together. Um, so about 2013, and then we opened our doors in April of 2015. And yeah, I mean, we got help from um, an amazing amount of places. Um, the SBDC, which is hosted by James Madison University mm -hmm. in the Ice House, right. um, really helped with the business plan the presentation, um, finding different grants and funds. 
Um, and then the city of Harrisonburg and economic development has been amazingly supportive from the beginning. We actually received um, a loan from them um, when we were first opening up, which was very attractive interest rate, um, just really uh, supportive of the city. So yeah, it takes a village. Yes, I have no doubt. <laughs> uh, and in talking about the community, you're engaged in the community as well. Yeah. And I, I'd love to hear your thoughts about the place of the brewery sort of in the community. You talked about that community development side of things. I think that this has done a lot for this particular area. And if no one knows, you know, JMU is also a major tenant in the Ice House as well. And so they have put a number of resources in here. Why don't you talk about some of the community aspects? Uh, and the reason that I'm asking this is because this quality of life aspect, which I believe is so abundantly apparent in the brewery culture is a significant part of, you know, what brings people in town. So with all of that, can you remember what I originally asked you? I'm, I'm working on it. <laughs> um, no, I mean, as far as community goes, I mean, this is, this is my community. This is my family's community. I live about three blocks away from here. Um, my kids go to school. Uh, at Waterman Elementary, which is about four or five blocks away from here. Um, and it's one of the things I really love about downtown Harrisonburg is that if you go around and you talk to the different business owners, 95% of us live, you know, right downtown, you know, I mean, we are actively members of, of Harrisonburg and truly love it. And that's why we're willing to put the work into it. Um, as far as Pale Fire goes, you know, the tap room, the beer is, is really important to us, but one of the things that I've always believed um, about craft beer is that, you know, it, it facilitates relationships. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a great beer is, is, is always great, but it's 10 times better with a friend, mm -hmm. or it's 10 times better over a good conversation um, or something like that. So with our tap room, we've gone out of our way to do, um, live book readings. Um, mm -hmm. We've partnered with uh, NPR um, for events. Um, we do a lot of live music. Um, we do fundraisers, um, you know, really anything that gets people in the space and interacting face to face. Cause um, I mean, I guess at this point, Facebook is a necessity, but it's so much, so much better to see somebody smile when you're talking to them. Yeah. I am one of these days. I'm going to make it to one of your sessions. I think they're on Tuesdays most of the time. Books and Brews. Yeah, Books and Brews. WMRA. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. No, it's great. Uh, I'd like to finish this with something. You have been committed to the community. Tell us about what you did with the pandemic with Hellfire Helps. Sure. Which I think is a phenomenal story and a great story for how you've given back to the community as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Pale Fire Helps was a uh, pop-up food bank for restaurant workers. So in early March, when the pandemic really, really started to take hold, um, you know, basically every single restaurant, uh, in including Pale Fire, had to close their doors. And um, all of the bartenders, the serving staff, the, the dishwashers, the line cooks, the chefs, um, basically all went out of work at at once um you know they were eventually there was things like unemployment benefits and stuff like that but that took a, a while to to kind of come around and to fall into place so um we had an idea and we reached out to cisco foods of virginia which is um in uh based out of harrisonburg and we basically just said hey we have an abundance of supply due to the pandemic or pandemic and you know, do you guys also have an excess uh -huh. of supply and an excess of food? And if so, would you want to partner and use Pale Fire Space as a uh, location where we can get this food to the service industry workers, which have recently lost their means of income yeah. and, you know, do something that just helps, uh, helps a little bit, saves some cash and keeps people fed. Um, the the result like far exceeded our expectations. Um, we went through over 25 pallets of food um, oh, that was great. just given away. Um, the community, uh, Harrisonburg, but, but 
really um, from all over Virginia really stepped up. We got donations in excess of twenty thousand dollars to support the program. Oh, that's fantastic! Um, which was crazy. Yeah. Um, we uh, a local um, web service company called Digital Minerva donated their time and efforts and did all of the web presence. Um, and then, amazingly, the concept actually spread to seven other locations. Mm -hmm. Um, including one in Raleigh, North Carolina, and uh, one right outside of Oakland in California. So we did Pale Fire Helps, and we got all that food out in the Harrisonburg community, but there was also um, very similar programs in Richmond, Raleigh, Oakland, Charlottesville. Um, so it really, really was just kind of astounding how much of a success it was. That is a remarkable story and it's great. We also want to thank Cisco. Cisco is an investor in SVP and also approached us with, you know, potentially hosting and getting that out. You did a phenomenal job with helping a lot of people and just spreading the news, you know, and again, I think it goes back to that culture. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, it was just a little idea. Everybody, um, you know, was so shell shocked by the pandemic and you just, you know, your, your reaction is just kind of like, what can I do? And a lot of times you don't know how to help. And we just had a little idea that ended up really working out well. Well, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Really appreciate you allowing us to, to be here this morning and hosting us for this. Oh, excited to host anytime. Big fan of Phil Fire, I oh, have to you. say. All right. Thank you, Tim. Excellent. Really well, thank you so much, Jay. It. Thank you all. Yeah. I want to spend a little bit of time talking about co-working space and what is going on during the pandemic. And there is a lot of people that are working from home, but there are also people that need structure. And that is so important and an opportunity for us here in the Valley. So I want to introduce a very special guest, Peter Denby, who can talk to us about the co-working space. Um, he is a serial entrepreneur. I've known Peter long before I came to the Valley. Hi, Peter. Hey, Jay. Uh, he and his wife, Allison, have created the game Watch Your Mouth. They market this, produce it, sell it all over. And because Peter didn't have enough to do with his normal <laughs> entrepreneurship work, he has created some co-working space and is becoming a a landlord, what, and which is the Stanton Innovation Hub. Welcome, Peter. Thanks, Jay. I'm really glad to be here and just love everything that the SVP does. I mean, it's, you guys have been a great supporter of all of our efforts. We appreciate it. Now, our last in-person Connect event was at the Stanton Innovation Hub in right. October. Yeah. Who knew that we would right. be doing this sort of thing now? But in the meantime, everybody had a tour of the facilities yeah. there that wanted it. Tell us where you are now. Tell us what's going on. Sure. And then let's jump. We'll jump into this this co-working. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So so to catch everyone up, we have, it's a two-part project. Phase one at 32 North Augusta in Stanton has been open for a couple of years. Kind of a traditional co-working space with co-working and private offices and shared conference rooms, and phone booths, and good snacks and good coffee and you know everything that's needed to keep <laughs> keep uh, keep innovators innovating. Uh, and then so that's 4,500 square feet total. Um, we decided that that was not nearly enough chaos in our life. And so let's, let's take, let's That's kick what that Allison up. said. Yeah. <laughs> let's kick that up by about six times. And so right next door was the former news leader building, which was a 25,000 square foot facility. Uh, and so we acquired that facility and we are now renovating that due to open sometime between the end of this month. And, you know, as soon as we can, coronavirus is thrown in couple kinks in the in the in the pipe there but uh, so we're taking that it'll end up being a two building 30,000 square foot campus um, in a in a very fairly small beautiful rural setting uh, in Stanton which is a part of the greater Shenandoah Valley yeah. and so phase two will have co-working and private offices that will have anchor spaces of which Mary Baldwin is a part uh, Stanton Creative Community Fund is a part it'll have a lot of shared resources classrooms um, it'll have a, a large gathering spot like a warehouse that has all the typical things 
that, are, that an innovator needs, such as coffee, but we'll also have beer, and you know, all, all the things a good business happens around. Uh, and, and really with the, the, the underlying fundamental mission of reducing barriers to innovation. We'll get back to how that's such, a, such an important uh, common denominator with everything within the Shenandoah Valley is, and, and how, how we can be a part of a greater effort to reduce barriers to innovation in this area. Appreciate that. The reason what Peter says is so important to SVP, it's because we're working on trying to help the entrepreneur ecosystem. And really, Peter is no better, you know, uh, example of that, but it's not the only co-working space. And we believe it's a real opportunity in the valley here. We have the Perchett Magpie, as an example, is, is mm -hmm. another one here. But you were saying something off camera, <laughs> offline, just before yeah. we were talking, and it kind of validates where we want to go with SVP in attracting you know, satellite offices, companies that are interested in allowing their people to continue right. to work out of the office, you right. know, and because some of these offices are probably not going to reopen for quite a while yet. Yeah. I heard what you were saying. Why don't you go into that? Sure. And, you know, what has happened during the pandemic? Well, so what's, uh, what's interesting with, with entrepreneurship and innovation, you, you really look for what sort of opportunities exist all the time. So maybe something traditionally unfortunate happens. Well, there's a there's a equal amount of opportunity that is typically part of that if you just can can look through the right lens. And coronavirus and COVID have built they, they they've catalyzed this paradigm shift in how people think about work and life and location. And uh, so the example that you are asking me to give is Facebook. Google, Microsoft, Amazon to a portion as just a small sample size of a large number of companies have recently announced that 50% or more of their workforce will forever be remote moving forward. Mm -hmm. So gosh, man, look at the opportunity that that creates for some places beautiful as the Shenandoah Valley that you can, you can live here within 15 minutes, you can be at Shenandoah National Park, 15 minutes the other direction, George Washington National yeah. Forest, still in close proximity to DC and Richmond and the beach and the mountains. Um, and so you have these families and these individuals that are thinking that are in a densely populated urban environment, some, which is great for some folks, for other folks that like to have a little bit more room to stretch. You can get uh, what I, I, I told Keith earlier, a real house with a real backyard for a fraction of what you pay for uh, an apartment. And, and so they're thinking, well, if I can work from home in my apartment in the city, why can't I work from home from my house in this beautiful setting that is the Shenandoah Valley? And so at the innovation, you know, you have the Stanton Innovation Hub, you have the Perch, you have all these incredibly well-equipped facilities that not only have the equipment that you need, the, the gig internet, the, the coffee, the beer, whatever it might be, but almost as important, if not more important, you have the ecosystem, the entrepreneurial and innovation yeah. ecosystem that builds around that. So when someone transplants themselves from an urban environment, more urban environment to the Shendo Valley, they come into this, this situation where it's like, hey, welcome, we're really glad you're here. Keep your distance from me if you don't mind for now. But, you know, yeah. let's, let's figure out how we can work together. Let's welcome your family into this community and let's get, let's, you know, let's hit the ground running together and, and do what you need to do. And then success breeds success. And one thing leads to another. And you have this person who moved in talking to this person who moved in like, oh, I didn't know we shared that in common. I've had this idea percolating for a while. Well, why don't we get together and do this as a side hustle? And then that side hustle turns into the next big thing. Uh, you know we're recording this, right? And I'm going uh -oh. to use this as a testimonial okay. for us. I, I just, you have my permission. I, I mentioned that. Uh, <laughs> you just mentioned something part of that ecosystem, too, though. That was yeah. one of the things that struck me, Peter, when I first saw the Innovation Hub. Mm -hmm. uh, after knowing what you were doing, but they had never seen it, but it's that, that ecosystem that allows people to get together and sort of leverage one another's Absolutely. idea. I, I'd love for you to describe that because that's so much of what you already have there. 
And then you've talked about the quality of life aspect and also what you're doing with sort of the outdoor space mm -hmm. and right. the collaborative space in your new building right. there. I, you don't have to spend long, but <laughs> okay. that's I'm very appealing, I think, for people to understand that you have, you've sort of built, built it from soup to nuts all in one location, right. but it's more than just a building it's more than just a place yeah yeah and i'll accept your challenge to try to keep this short <laughs> it's hard to do on this project uh, but yes it, it's so so part of the impetus for wanting to do this project is my own entrepreneurial journey and the the crazy ups and the crazy downs that i've experienced yeah. i mean there were times in my life where the electricity got shut off in my apartment because i couldn't pay the bill there are times in our life when we have a product that is literally distributed around the world and in mass quantities and all, you know, I will mention it's all distributed from Waynesboro, Virginia in the Shenandoah Valley is one of our distribution Good centers. Good plug. Go, ve <laughs> Go Vector Industries yeah, yeah. Um, doing a great job for us. And so, but it's this, it's the, the entrepreneurial and innovative roller coaster. It's emotional roller coaster. And so that's part one of why we wanted to do this. And, and to your, to your question, which I'm, not doing a good job of answering quickly uh, it's all interrelated. is you need support through that journey. So our mission of reducing barriers to innovation, those can be, Hey, I only need, I'll have an idea. and I don't want to sign on to a two year lease. I need a month to month lease. Okay. We got you. Um, I've had a really bad day and I just need someone to commiserate with. Okay. You know, I've had plenty of bad days. Let's go sit down in the warehouse and have a beer. Uh, let's come to pale fire and have a beer. Uh, let's talk through it. I've had an incredible day. I'm scared to death because I've got this incredible opportunity to have me. How do I do this? Well, let's sit down and let's talk about how to do this. Did you know this person's been through a similar journey? How about this person? This person's a good programmer. This person's a copywriter. Let's all get together and see how we can support one another. Um, and, and earlier, Tim was saying it takes a village. And it does. It absolutely does. And it takes this, this community to come together and support one another because it's the team that makes it happen. It might be one or two people that have that initial breakthrough idea, but it's impossible to execute without a quality team. Yeah. Um, and, and Stanton has been uh, supportive of your efforts, the city too. They have, right? yeah, they're, 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 they're pretty thrilled to have us there and, and we love being in Stanton. Yeah. Um, and, it, and, it's, and it's building that, that team around, building an environment that's under one roof where, where you get intelligent, motivated people and put them in a really cool space together and you just kind of stand back and let the magic happen. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the last thing I want to touch on is you represent, but it's also our interest in retaining our young talent yeah. here. Um, and you mentioned the aspects of the quality of life too, sure. that Tim also talked yeah. about that, you know, and I know that people make fun sometimes of, Oh yes, another brewery, but breweries, actually represent the entrepreneurial spirit in a community and really convey a great message. I'd love to hear your thoughts about what you're um, focusing on sort of as a, a marketing, I don't want to say mission, but you know, how do we retain the talent? How are you looking at attracting that talent and weaving that in with the quality of life aspect. And I, and I don't know if that's a fair question. You can say it's a question. You didn't prepare me for that but, question, yeah. Jay. But it's important. You represent part of that. Yeah. And yeah. I, I, I have the sense that this is what is very attractive to young people. You well. bet. You bet. So for me, it's, this is not, the Shendo Valley is not the place for everyone. And, and I'm okay with that. Um, but it is the place for a lot of people. And those that are looking for a, play, uh, a lifestyle more than just cranking away in front of a screen for the rest of their life. And they're looking for a place where they can raise a active, healthy, well-adjusted family. Uh, they can come to, to uh, then come home and go outside. Yeah. But what's, what's amazing about today is that you don't have to be in New York City or Silicon Valley to change the world, to, create, to innovate. I mean, our product, Watch Your Mouth, it was invented in Stanton. We launched on Kickstarter in 2016. It went viral uh, and it is now distributed around the world 
but it was started in Stanton. It's distributed mm -hmm. from Waynesboro. I'm a two-time grad of JMU in Harrisonburg. I lived here for a long time and just love the Shando Valley. And so, but, so that's a physical product. Um, and there's millions of those have been sold from right here in the Shando Valley, but that doesn't mean, so it, we did it with a physical product. We can do it with a, a service industry. We can do it with a nonprofit. It's the scalability is here. We have the connectivity. Um, we have so much of what the urban environments offer and so much more that provide the energy and the, the rejuvenization and, um, the, the networking and, you know, you look at the Shando Valley as one valley yeah. instead of like a bunch of little pods. Wow. Yeah. And if, and if we true. can, if we can step out of that and say, Harrisonburg has some great things to offer in Stanton and Waynesboro and Lexington. And like, how do we all collaborate? How do we come together? Because you, you get all the magic of all these little areas working together. And I mean, there is no limit to what is possible here without sacrificing that quality of life that, that is necessary to live. I mean, we're here on this earth once to live and live our best life. And I think Shenandoah Valley is the place where we can live our best life. Thank you. I cannot summarize that any better than that you just <laughs> did there. Uh, and you can see why it is always such a pleasure when we have a prospect that is looking at this type of space. I love getting them in front of Peter. <laughs> he and Allison and their passion for what they do sell the area so well. And I think really personify well, thank you. what the Valley is all about. We've so got a, uh, a really interesting uh, event coming up oh, late, yes, later, later, yeah. later next week um, that we can't quite announce yet, but I would encourage folks to keep their eyes peeled. I think it's going to be a very nice, very high exposure event for the Shenandoah Valley. Uh, something I hope that, you know, we'll see how many face masks we have so we can have people around. Um, but it, it's going to be, um, it's going to be a, a real uh, data point for how the Shenandoah Valley is being elevated in, in terms of status, in terms of what's possible with innovation in a more rural setting. Um, and I think it's going to be a great launching point for moving forward on what, uh, how the rest of the state and the rest of the country kind of views what we're doing here in the Shendo Valley. So keep your eyes peeled for that. And, and we look forward to that event kicking off as well later next week. Great. We look yeah. forward to hearing more about that. Yeah. Yeah. I know it'll be something. Thanks we'll for everything you guys are doing. This is awesome. What a great fun idea to, you know, everything, everything is different now. So why don't we do everything differently? And, and so props to you guys for thinking outside the box here. Thank you, Peter. Yeah. All really right. appreciate it. Cool. Keep up the good work. You too. Take care. Oh, and take your chair. Too. I'm taking my chair and I'm going home. <laughs> Uh, now comes a time in the part of the meeting. I want to give an update on SVP, uh, what we have done this last year on what we're planning on doing, part of which you, you've heard just about, and I am equally as passionate about uh, what we are doing in terms of the workforce talent and um, in, in workforce issues and so forth. You know, we, we transformed very quickly in the pandemic. I was at a conference when Governor Northam, you know, gave the shutdown orders for Virginia. And I'm sure like many of you, I had a calendar that was booked for several months out and within 48 hours, I had a clear calendar, had no idea what was going to be going on. I know this was a very, very common theme. I will tell you that I think because of the SVP team, I have to give great credit to our uh, staff, uh, Carrie Orbaugh, who is standing behind the camera right now, uh, making sure I do the right things. Jen Weaver in our office, our administrative officer, and also the administrative officer for Go Virginia, and Travis Carter, our business development manager, did not miss a beat. We immediately launched into virtual meetings, virtual outreach. We have been a part of numerous working groups. We have been working projects is the, the good news. We have been scheming, as I like to say in many ways, on how can we leverage the assets in the Valley? How do we get our news out? How do we share 
that we're not completely shut down like other parts of Virginia or the U.S. And so we went from a time when we hit the ground running for outreach last year. Uh, we had been in Texas for an IT show, had been in Pennsylvania for a, an outdoor recreation product show. Uh, we had consultant event where we brought consultants in in November, had a spectacular day there, thanks to some of our investors. I have to mention uh, Neil Hoff with his operations and JMU allowing us to use the Bridgeport Stadium and Dynamic Aviation, which really uh, helped us through that day. Consultant Connect event in Chicago, a Consultant Connect event in Atlanta and a marketing mission. And those were in February and then we all know what happened after that. We had a cancellation of our media tour. We had a cancellation of another consultant event in May. Both of those are now indefinitely done. What we have done instead though, is that we have hosted a virtual fam tour, which we learned, we had fun, we had good participation for site location consultants. Uh, we had a logistics uh, virtual tour where we had two of our great companies in the Valley, Mercury Paper, who produces toilet paper, and we sent out care packages to all of our consultants, which they loved uh, with a couple of rolls of toilet paper for them while the rest of the world was going crazy over toilet paper. Interchange also did a phenomenal job in talking about the logistics of the food and beverage in the area. We had a workforce uh, meeting where we presented the Merck model, which is unique for Virginia. May not be unique for the US, but it certainly got the attention of some of our consultants. And then finally, our annual meeting. We had hoped that we would be able to do this in person, but it is what it is. We're not gonna let this stop us. We're going to be moving forward. In the same vein, we are doing things for outreach. We have been very active electronically, digitally, uh, social media, uh, many forms of getting our message out of the opportunities and the quality of life. We are going to continue on that. We continue to work with a number of groups throughout the Valley, assisting businesses being there available for the resources that they might need, linking people together. Uh, we've even uh, been on workforce groups where we were able to raise money from the private sector, much of it like Tim was saying that he had done. So tremendous spirit in the Valley to move ahead and to do things. And we're gonna to continue to do that. We are going to continue with a calendar that is going to be virtual for the near term. We're gonna take a little bit of a breather after this meeting. Carrie deserves a little uh, respite uh, from this, at least for a month or so, I will say. Uh, but we're going to be engaged with the same consultants and other groups. We're going to be working with Peter and company on how do we market co-working space throughout the valley, you know, and thinking about the demographics of who we want to reach. And so we're excited about that. We're also rolling out what I'm very proud of is the business scale-up project, which was a Go Virginia grant. And it is basically a program in that entrepreneurial ecosystem for second stage growth companies. So we are working with all of our localities to get help businesses and help our existing businesses grow. You know, as much as we want to recruit new businesses in, still the predominant growth comes from our existing businesses. And how can we help the underserved portions of our region uh, that might not be as easy to recruit a company to as growing their own. So we're getting that implemented uh, currently. Uh, we will also be looking at a sites uh, project 
through Go Virginia where we're interested in improving the marketability of some sites, raising them up so that they are more ready to go and to backfill uh, some of the sites that fortunately we are you know, still seeing activity on. So we're excited about that. And finally, on the workforce piece, there are a number of parties, uh, including JMU, Blue Ridge Community College, Ward Fairfax, Dabney Lancaster, a lot of different parties where we understand that there is a need for workforce programs. We have a juxtaposition in the Valley of where our manufacturers are running as hard as they can go. Yet we have been hit hard in the hospitality and the retail sectors. Our unemployment went from below 3% to approximately 11% right now. And essentially, as Tim was saying, overnight, you know, we, with the shutdowns that were people having. But the juxtaposition is that those people that are without the jobs don't have the skill sets that the manufacturers and other businesses are looking for. And we are looking at ways to try to fill that gap. So that is an important part of what SBP is doing. You know, workforce is our present and it's our future for the, the long term. And we're going to continue to, to do the, that kind of work. So I will wrap this up by saying that, you know, you're going to hear more from us about our outreach, recruiting, getting the news uh, out about the Shenandoah Valley to companies as a place to set up satellite offices from co-working space to new, new plants, which we are actively working on. We're going to be engaged in workforce initiative. Workforce is economic development now, whether we like it or not. It's going to be here long past when I am doing economic development. Demographics are not working in our favor and the region that has successful workforce programs is going to be successful. We're going to be thinking about the talent attraction and retention that Peter talked about. That's one of the things that is very appealing to our younger generations. They're making decisions upon where they want to live and then they start a business or they find a job and they go back to school to further their education. Uh, to create more, so we're excited about that. And finally, we're going to do a better job of selling the quality of life aspects in the Valley. So we have a very, uh, uh, really complex calendar, <laughs> it's the way to put it for this coming year. We are hoping in 2021, we will actually be doing some in-person work again. We miss our Connect events where we interface uh, with our investors. Our investors are so important to the Shenandoah Valley Partnership. We cannot do this without what you have heard from Peter and Tim. You know, businesses understand when a region is wanting to grow and move forward. And we cannot do that without your help. We really appreciate the numerous companies that have stepped up, helped us throughout this process. I have to give Andy and his team kudos. They have, our consultants have thought we have been just, um, you know, above the, the fray in our ability to transition so quickly and be able to get our message out. So that's another, uh, uh, another way that our investors help us. Uh, and I can think of no one who has more passion and involvement and has been a long-term investor than our outgoing chair of the Shenandoah Valley Partnership, Keith May. Come on in, Keith. You have been, well, you were here before I was here. So I'd love for you to you know, talk about it. And I know most of you know Keith May, but aside from being, you know, the head of Cottonwood Development, being in, in as you say, just a broker with Klein May, but he has been our chair for the Shenandoah Valley Partnership for a, uh, a couple of years. It's been involved much longer than that, and is going to be involved after this as well. So, Keith, thank you.
Thank you very much, Jay. Uh, this reminds me a little bit of the Jay Leno uh, approach, or maybe Johnny Carson, where he pulls up his guests up here, and then, but uh, this you is a great, great, uh, great style. Uh, I'll, I'll say my very first uh, role as chairman of the uh, of SVP is Carrie Cheenery called me into her office 15 minutes before our very first executive committee meeting, and she said, so Keith, um, I um, want to be a mom and I'm going to resign from SVP. Now that's not the first thing a chair wants to hear uh, as their very first thing, but, but uh, fortunately we, we made uh, lemons into lemonade. We're able to find uh, a fantastic uh, executive in Dr. Jay Langston and, and he's just been such a great fit. Uh, he has such an amazing background in economic development. He, he led a region in the past. He worked at the state for many years, led various projects at the state. And we are lucky enough that the, the Valley was, was, had a good enough of a reputation that would attract someone in management from the state level. And I think it's because he sort of has some Georgia hillbilly roots too. It sort of matches to some of our, some of our uh, SVP footprint. But anyway, he's, he's been a true blessing to have as our CEO of SVP. So, so thank you so much for joining us, uh, Jay, and, and for leading this, this group. And, and that's not to say that Jay is doing all the work because certainly his staff is well qualified. Um, Travis and Carrie and Jen are just fantastic people. We have a great team and that's a great team that's not only good for now, but it's going to, to propel us into the future. I always say that SVP if it is going to require SVP to be successful in order to, for the region to be successful. And I look at SVP as the most valuable entity in the entire region because it's the only entity that looks at the region as a whole and tries to propel us into the future. So that's why we need businesses support, we need individual support, we need people, people getting their friends to join SVP because it takes a village, it takes a region, it takes all of us to get behind SVP. They're doing a lot of work with a staff of three. And can you imagine, you know, promoting the entire area with a limited budget with three people in order to promote the region? I think they're doing a fantastic job. And it also shows how flexible they are with, with during our COVID times. So I just, I just wanna thank them for making my job easy and also the executive board and the, and, the, yeah. and the board itself for making my job easy to, to be chairman of this entity. So it's been an honor and a pleasure to have served SVP, but, but I will say that it's going to be in great hands uh, with Chris Kyle as our next chair. But I didn't think that my shoes would be easy to fill but actually his shoes are bigger. So, <laughs> so um, I think you could do it quite easily plus more. But yeah. anyway, thank you very much for having me on, Jay. I'm definitely going to, to continue to be involved in SVP. It's an organization that goes to my heart and it's an organization that we all need to get behind. So yeah. thank, thank you, you Keith. I, I have to uh, tell everybody that Keith made it so easy for me to transition here. First of all, I had known the organization. I had known Robin Sullenberger for years. I had worked with Carrie Chinnery when she, before she got married and she was working at VDP and knew the organization. And I did know of the reputation of the Valley and it's what you were saying and what you personified, people working together. I have said this to many of the investors and the people here, I know that the reputation is great. You're better than your reputation. That made it so easy and it has been fun working with this team. It is a team up here that makes everything happen. The board, the exec committee has been phenomenal. I was at a music festival when I called and offered Jay the job. He said, can I have until Monday? I said, no, we want you. You can't have it, but we actually did give him until Monday. So anyway, but thanks for having process. me, Jay. I Thank you, it. Oh, and before you get away, this is for you, a parting gift. All right, I, I, excellent. No. Can, I drink, it, can I drink it right now? Oh, oh maybe, maybe not. So, I'm, 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 I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> I have several things come to mind, but I'm not going to say anything. I'd like to introduce our incoming chair, Chris Cobb. Chris is 
the vice president of Shintel, has been our vice chair for a couple of years. And Chris, although, yes, has big shoes to fill, Chris has also been very engaged in economic development. He's been very engaged with the Shenandoah Valley Partnership. Uh, and Chris also has the distinction of now becoming the chair of Go Virginia at the same time. So Chris, I'll turn it over to you. Well, it's great to be here this morning, Jay. And I don't think um, I could say anything uh, else before saying thank you to Keith Mann. Um, you know, this is an incredibly exciting time to be involved in economic development, to be working with you, Jay. I'm looking forward to this. It's something that's near and dear to my heart. Um, it, it's going to be hard for me to say anything different uh, than what Keith has already said. Uh, we've worked together for a number of years here, but the team that we have in place, I remember that day, by the way, that first executive committee meeting. And um, the fact that you're here um, and we have the foundation and the momentum that we've talked about today, I think it goes to Keith's leadership. And um, it's just, while economic development is near and dear to my heart, one of the added benefits is uh, this community uh, that's been talked about uh, where, you know, if you love business, to be able to share business ideas, to work through complex business ideas with leaders like Keith May. And, um, and others, but specifically Keith May. So thank you, Keith, for your work. I think that, uh, Jay, you, you know, while this is an incredibly unusual time, you've talked about how nimble you've yeah. been, how you've pivoted on a dime. That goes to the team that you've got in place here. It goes to kind of the foundation that you've built over your career, your connections in Richmond. Um, you know, th this, organization is going to be incredibly important to tell the story of the Shenandoah Valley. We're poised for great things. I loved hearing Peter's comments uh, about the lifestyle balance that we have. Um, but it goes you know, both ways. Um, we're going to continue to grow businesses that are here, and there's a lot of work to be done there uh, around workforce you touched on briefly. Uh, we're going to continue to market and tell this amazing story that we have with all of your contacts uh, and your team's contacts uh, to bring new companies in to this area. So we're poised for great things, and I just couldn't be great, any more grateful to just be here beside you to play a small role in this. Well, appreciate it very much, Chris. We are poised, I think, to do some great things. We have had the backing of the board, which I really appreciate both you and Keith there. Uh, and I'm excited about some of the things that we're looking at doing this coming year. So really, I just wanted to thank everyone once again, uh, all of our investors, both our private and our public. You have stood by us, you've been supportive, and we, are stronger because of all of that. Uh, I want to thank once again, Appeal Production for sponsoring and hosting uh, this uh, virtual meeting for us. I'm assuming that it has gone well, and I'm sure that you will let us know. Otherwise, I also want to take, thank Tim Brady for hosting us in Pale Fire. It's a, a great setting, and I think personifies in many ways what we want to do. Uh, as a reward for sticking with us this morning, uh, I will let you know that staff will be at Pale Fire today from four to seven. Uh, you can come by and pick up a pint glass, Shenandoah Valley Partnership and the Beer Works Trail here. We want you to support the local economy and just so you know, the first beer is on us as well. So that's from four to seven today. Um, so please stop by and you've, you've earned your glass. And with that, I want to say thanks again. We look to a great year and we appreciate all of your participation and sponsorships. Thanks everyone. Have a great summer. Bye.